Every day I'm hustling, rustling, rustling in the wind. Yale Brothers, episode 66. I don't know what to think anymore. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say anymore. Especially to you. Well, I'm tired of the same old ways. Tired of Jimi Hendrix playing Purple Haze. Gotta look around and I see where I am. Tired of reading about the son of Sam. I don't know where this is going But I'm finding the key I don't know what to say Everybody's laughing at me I don't give a damn Yeah, you go on and laugh at me But I know who I am and you're thinking Maybe out loud Maybe thinking about you're gonna lose this crowd And I know it's gonna be that way I know that you got nothing to say Of the same old thing No night stands And tell me what does that bring Tired of sitting around With my tongue in my head Teeth are always chatting When I wake up dead And I don't know what to say Here we are again. Imagine that. Oh my God, I'm so excited again to be in your little hideaway. But I'll tell you what, I couldn't uh, really get through here with all these damn guitars in here. <laughs> no, be... you see all my guitars? Yeah. Oh my God, are these all your guitars? <laughs> yeah, but don't ask me if I look at that tub. Do you want to take a bath? Look at the size of this tub. Do you want to take a bath? Take it easy, Tony Tennille on the wall. Oh my Big God. Fluid. Check it out. How many guitars do you see out right Eins, now? It's five that I fear of boom six. One's a bass and one's a baritone guitar. One's a bass, one's a baritone. What's with your damn gear acquisition syndrome? That's brand new, isn't it? They're different voices. That is the Morgan that Spruce Live. I got it on sale, and I've used it at two gigs. Are you going to start calling it JP when you bring it out? No, because because I have well, I have to I have to name them something because I have the mahogany version of that also. Do you know where you're going to? Uh, no, uh, I'm going to heaven ultimately, but. Uh, so these all have different voices. I also have, I was gifted a electric sitar from 1967. So uh, I need some new strings, but man, that's that was very generous of my friend to give me. Oh, that's interesting. It's called, it's called a coral. It's made by Dan Electro. Way. <laughs> what? Coral way. Coral way. Um, so each of these instruments that are out have different voices. Yes. The regular six string uh, mm -hmm. electric. And then my Telecaster, I uh it's now five string tuned in open G a la Keith. Okay, hurry up because I'm gonna lose interest. Okay, so anyway, what you heard at the top of the <laughs> shut up, man. I've already lost interest. In wait, wait, you have say. Orange Wood, Orange Wood. Yeah. What's that one called? Alvarez. Oh Alvarez, I, I don't have my glasses on. Carbon base. A carbon base, that looks nice. Pacifica uh strat style electric with a humbucker and a p90 i love that name humbucker <laughs> yeah i bet you do uh and then my my 78 telly oh i have other instruments stashed like my martin which needs work and you my did takaminis but you didn't get that telly in 78 no i got an 80 80 82 oh that still was kind of new back then 
Freedom Guitar up there on, uh, is it Selma? I don't remember. Above, don't. above. Where, where was our tap studio? <laughs> <laughs> Yucca? Yucca? Was it? No. Yeah. It was Yeah, it was on Yucca, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was up uh, up Vine Street. Past Wait a the, minute. Pa- past the uh, the palace and then up Franklin to the left. Was it on Selma? Did, no, did Yucca run east to west too? I don't know, man. No. Yeah, I think so. Yucca. Well, then I'm wrong. No, it's called. I remember that. I remember. I remember. Freedom kind of guitar. Where, I don't, didn't really go into guitar shops. Anyway, what you heard at the at the top of this was a little th- something I was messing with years ago. I found it on my old Yamaha multi track. It's not complete. It's just just a little something. It's called same old thing. It is. It doesn't sound like the same old thing. It's, no, it doesn't. Well, that's that's. Um, Okay, I'm going to get past the guitars I'm looking at. Now. Why now? Listen, man, you you better not let your ADD g- get ahead of you, Chris. You know I always have little bullet points. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. <laughs> and I'm your twin, so be careful. Well, something just had to got bumped to the top of the bullet point list. And what would that be? We, we were downstairs talking about Sister Kathleen. <laughs> That's funny, man. There's a story when Chris and I went to St. Hugh. It was kind of a, I don't know, K through eight, K through eight, little Catholic school connected to St. Hugh Church, Coconut Catholic Grove, Church in Coconut Grove, down around by the old Coconut Grove Playhouse. Um, Sister Kathleen brought all the boys, seventh or eighth grade boys, into a classroom and she gave us a lecture. Oh, yeah. Remember? Oh, well, sure. Of course you remember. We just talked about it. It was hilarious. She Funny. said... It had come to her attention, and she checked it out herself, that some boy wrote, fuck Sister Kathleen on the wall. In that one of the stalls. In the, in, 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 was it the stall or somewhere? Yeah. Oh, somewhere, somewhere in the, in the, in the, in the boys' room. room. <laughs> right. So here's, here's what she said. She was a principal, by the way. Um, she's like, one of you boys has committed rape in your minds. And for, okay, that's how she led in and then she said what she read on the wall it's um i'm sure all the boys were thinking um that's not what it meant and then here's the i mean it's crazy that she she said that (laughs) she didn't understand that someone just didn't like her and she was pissed at her yeah she didn't realize that but i mean god forbid that's funny in a catholic she goes i know martial arts i can take a big man down (laughs) it's like i don't think it means what you think it i should have i wanted to raise my hand so bad no yeah but if you did you'd be implicated yeah so that's not what it meant sister kathleen (laughs) you are mistaken my dear walrus that's um but i mean do that that kind of shit sticks with you like if you raised your hand you'd be blamed for yeah, writing for sure it. you na- that's a nasty habit you got there sister anyway i'm not sure how to get all through all this vulgarity because i wanted to bring something wholesome up finally you know what i mean foul mouth wholesome. bastard <laughs> oh wholesome. my now raj said wholesome Raj is easily circling the drain at any moment. So get why don't you climb up out of it and say something wholesome? Wholesome. Remember there was a wholesome bread. Yes, in I was just thinking that. Oh my God, wholesome bread. That's crazy. Speaking of my wholesome aim, prison, wholesome wholesome prison blues. That's what they feed you. Wholesome, wholesome. It's the kind of bread that if you put peanut butter and jelly on it, the jelly seeps through the yeah into the <laughs> top of the sandwich. Yeah, yeah. In, in the little plastic wrap, you take it off and yeah. the bread's all soggy. Yeah, it's it's bad quality processed. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't haven't had wholesome bread. I don't even know if they still make it. It's now. a wonder they even make it, get it? Oh, that's funny, dude. Anyway, where were you going to go, man? Well, this is, I was going to go into something a little more wholesome. I enjoyed speaking to Fred Burney last week or whenever, a couple weeks ago about the his the movie Once Upon a Coffee House and Dad's Coffee Houses. Oh, it was great. He really filled us in on a lot of stuff in Miami back in the day. That, yes, thank you, Fred. It that was, was a wonderful conversation. It really was. And uh, all that era was a bit of a mystery to us. Well, we were babies. Yeah, we were little babies. We made our debut in that. So did Ooh. Joan Rivers. Wow, we started our career on on the screen when she did. <laughs> on the, we started our career on the streets of Miami. Ooh, Oh, anyway, yeah, we sure did. Fred, Bernie, thank you very much for doing that. Yeah, thank you, Fred. That was awesome, man. And uh, for now, here's something a little wholesome, too. Oh, boy. 
You're expecting your next grandchild in what, September? Yeah. Oh, Little girl, man. Oh, my God. Congratulations, dude. Oh, my dude. God. Thank you. All right. So, uh, here, you're joining the Grandpa Club now. Uh, it's unbelievable and surreal. I'm happy to tell you that I will be joining the Grandfather Club. Uh, Wes and Lee are expecting their first child, a boy, in January. What are they going to call? What are they going to call you? I don't know, but I think the the grandkids. I, I'm thrilled beyond Abuelo. measure. I think um, one of my friends was right. Barbie said, "Let them whatever you think the name is going to be, they're going to name you." Yeah, that's why I'm called Dude. Did Did he just decide to call you Dude? No, Katie and Bill did. Grand Dude, but he just calls me Dude when he sees me. Hey, Dude. Hey, let me tell you about dude. the. Let me tell you it. about the reveal. Reveal. Yeah. Lee and Wes came over a while back now, but we were sworn to secrecy. We didn't make the announcement until they had the gender reveal a few weeks ago, right? Check this out. So Wes shows up. I thought he was coming just to say hello, la, la, la. And then so we're hanging with Wes, and then all of a sudden, Lee's coming over, right? Lee works down the road. And so Lee gets there. I go, great, we get to hang out, right? We get, we're going to hang out, talk a little bit. Wes goes, I think you got some gym clothes. You left some gym clothes at my house. (laughs) I said, okay. So I follow him out there, right? Gets gym clothes because I work out at his house sometimes. Brings it. I don't know if I went out with him, but he brought them back. One was a pair of shorts that I don't know the brand, but it could have been mine. And then one was a shirt, right? I go, that doesn't look like a shirt that I wear. Uh, More to work out. Anyway, the shirt said, just a grandpa who loves piano. So I look at it and I'm like, oh, okay. I thought it was just like, you're an old dude who likes piano. And they're staring at me and I finally got it. And there was the reveal. Anyway, it finally finally caught up to me. And I then I realized what, what was going on. But it was surreal. Yeah. Well, congratulations, man. Well, thank you. Congratulations to you too, yes, man. thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I want to say one more thing about the coffee house scene too. Uh, yeah. At that at that time the it was about to be overshadowed by the British invasion. Yeah, it was over. Right. So but so you, the Brill building was over too. Is that like Tin Pan Alley style songwriting? It's yeah, you know the Brill building. Carol King. Oh yeah. Barry, Cynthia Wheelberry Man, Andy Kim. Yeah. I didn't know much about Andy Kim. You told me he wrote a song, like the Archie song. Sugar, sugar. And I remember one hit he had. But With no. Jeff Berry. Oh, you know a lot of stuff. He had Rock Me Gently. Rock? I always thought that was Neil Diamondish. Same yeah, so did I. You thought? I, in fact, I could. it could have been Neil Diamond for all yeah, I knew. Sure, that's what I thought. Seriously. But you still have holdouts. You had you have Dylan, who you really looked up to, came from that scene. What scene? Not the Grove scene, scene, but the folk scene. Of course. A lot of people came out of that scene, man. Yeah, but the British invasion kind of squashed it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, hey, we were there. We saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. Did we? Uh, we were We were told we did. Well, you can be told you did a lot of things. Yeah, it seems about right. You we- can almost remember it because you were told... That's exactly right. That's how that's how it works. And then works. you see a rerun of it and you say, oh, yeah. I was little. I remember. I saw them from my bassinet. Bassinet, <laughs> huh? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <Do> we, <laughs> no, too bad we don't have those to give to uh, your grandson. What about your, the, your granddaughter? Do you have a bassinet? How about the rocking chairs that uh, mom and dad bought for the nurses? At Baptist Hospital when yeah. we were born? Yeah. The funny thing is, there were... Rock, white rocking chairs with little plaques and when our nephew was born we went in there yeah and i saw two rocking chairs off to the side yes it was just like in a little storage area and wouldn't you believe they were those the plaques were on it yes yeah that was amazing man i couldn't believe it was that was tim born in 1979 or 80 79 i think and there were those rocking chairs that wasn't so long a span though no I wonder what happened to him now that's... Gone, man. Oh, we should have gotten him. I can't believe we just decided we were going to play music. What do you mean? Like we decided, oh, we're going to start a band and just... What kind of question is that, man? Isn't that how things always start? I don't know, we just decided. I know I took piano lessons once. And then at 13, we're, oh, we're going to start a band. 
Yeah, that's how everyone starts. But you were the only one who really played. You played drums. You didn't play? I mean, I not really. I just messed around with piano. I ended up with piano because it was, uh, they go, like, I'll play bass, I'll play guitar, I'll play You drum. played piano all your life, man. But not, not when I was 13. I just banged around on it. Well, I always banged around on the drums, but I was in the orchestra and the school band. Yeah. <laughs> First chair in sixth grade. Yeah. I had the biggest practice pad. Man, I, I remember <laughs> yeah. playing Good King Wenceslas, and I was a clarinet player. Oh, yeah, yeah. The good old licorice stick. Well, you play the flute too, don't you? Um, no. Yeah, you, there's a setting on your keyboard for flute. Oh yeah, we do that kind of uh, Marshall Tucker thing. Yeah, cover hell. It's all right. It's not hell if you enjoy <laughs> playing songs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I re- oh yeah. I really want to improve my left hand, though. Well, why don't you just work on that left hand, man? The boogie woogie piano. Oh, I thought you were talking about something else. I'm sorry. Oh, I might need a coach. Oh, don't. I'm, I'm talking about the left hand of boogie woogie piano. Oh, you. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I thought you were talking about switching hands. Nah, I'm almost there with the. Uh, I'm there with the right hand, but the, the left. I'm sure hand you is are. A little, a little bit strange. Well, just work on, man. I mean, you obviously in a band, that's what bass players are for. Yeah, exactly. In fact, there's some kind of meme. There's like this tape on from the real bottom end of the piano to some couple octaves, an octave and a half. It says, do not, keyboard players, do not play here. Yeah. Uh, But I got to play there if we're just a duo. Yeah, well, I have a 25 key MIDI controller and (laughs) and that's that's all I need, man. Well, that's you play little, little. Uh, some people call it the hit claw. You know, like three fingers. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. If you see a lot of production suites. That's all most people have, unless you're a professional pianist or something. But this is good for me. But yeah, you need you. It's good to work on bass because when it drops out, we know. Yeah, that's why I don't even want to like really play much organ. Yeah, I know. It gets a little weird, man. No, but it sounds good. It's yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but... You lose the bottom end. Yeah. Oh, I... <laughs> Drops out, man. <laughs> I understand. Interesting sound situation at Lulu's the other night. It seemed to work. It was raining. It was packed. Yeah. But he decided just to eliminate the fronts... And play the and do the overheads. It's a huge air. It's a huge place. It's an open space with a lot of overhead speakers. It sounded good, actually. Everybody sounded fine. You don't want to be blasted out, especially when all the, they close all those garage door window things. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is have people complaining. So we let them do their own sound. Yeah, we're not. Gonna- we got our monitors dialed in the way we want it. And it's yeah. up to the house to do whatever they want, as long as people can hear us. Yeah, exactly. So that worked out all right, man. I hate. I mean, the monitor mix was great. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if the monitor mix is the only thing that, that is there and you're really not playing at all for anyone? Well, the tip jar said that wasn't true. Oh, maybe, maybe it did. Or maybe thank you for not playing. Here's, oh, here's five bucks, get out of here. That's funny. I like they got their own. Wait a minute. I remember some little kid came up before we started playing and dropped five bucks in there. Yep. It's like, what are you trying to say? What is that? Here's five bucks. Get the hell out of here. Here, kid. That's funny. Um, Then, then How about people try to talk to you in the middle of a song if they got a question? I know. They look at you and start. I can't hear what they're saying. I ignore them until I (laughs) I I see that they're there. Hold on a second. We'll come up to you and and ask what's going on. Yeah, and then the switcheroo when someone wants to hear a particular song from someone, we don't know may may not know that song, so we just try to play something from that band. I'm not a human jukebox man. No, but I mean, still, yeah, that's interesting. No requests, thank you. <laughs> Do you play requests? No, <laughs> that sucks, man. No, it doesn't. This is our show. Just sit down and listen. Oh, that's pretty nice. You know? think of it that way. Yeah, I mean, no, we don't play requests. This is a show, man. Yes, and you're a showman. No, I'm not. I'm a, I'm not a showman. I'm a shaman. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh my God. Watch, I can levitate this thing. No, I can't. Oh, Shoot. see. Okay, Yuri. Thank you, Yuri Geller. Bend a spoon. 
and then we had other gigs. We played that RV park again in North Myrtle, and then something called the Old Bull and Bush Pub. That's a fun little pub, man. Pub, little neighborhood bar. Nice little stage, good yeah. little crowd. Yeah, we have to bring our own PA and dial those in, though. Yeah, the schlepping bit is a little old for me now. Schlep rock. I don't really want to schlep things and set things up, man. No, I understand, but you do a good job of getting the sound good. I don't care. I, I'm talking about lifting the crap. I know how to work sound. No, I know. You're, <laughs> you're good at it. I don't. That's, well, why haven't you learned, man? Because I have you. One day you might not, and you'll no. have to go on alone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do some tutorials on my uh, <laughs> yeah. base. Get it learned, because I might, ha- I might be retiring or you know expiring. You never know. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> I'll retire I'll when just, I expire. I just have not known. God, Roger was a nice guy, but he didn't know how to do sound. It's a scam. <laughs> you scam me. Scammed you into doing sound. You got good at it. I don't know how to set this up. No, well, no, I do oh. kind of. I'll get it. I'll show you. Good. And do it next time, man. I'll show you. First, I'm going to get used to my DAW. <laughs> DAW. Yeah, well, go ahead. Okay. All right, you man. You have DAW. 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 I have it. I have Cubase. Well, that's as good as anything else, man. I guess so. I'm, I mean, it seems logical, but... No. Uh, <laughs> not, it's not logic. <laughs> it's one channel strip. That's all you have to worry about. One channel strip. Yeah. Learn what the controls do. You don't have to do a lot of stuff on it. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of crazy EQing or anything. Yeah, I understand. You don't have to use a lot of different effects. Just get it in there, man. No. Uh, yeah, just start with demoing stuff and see how I do. You could change the sounds after you record it, man. That's weird, dude. Yeah. That's really weird. Awesome. It's awesome, dude. Okay, well, I'll let you know how I do with that. All right, I'll expect a, a song next week. Uh, no, to put on the show, uh, uh, maybe uh, two weeks. I can record a, a song on my phone. Send it to you. My voice recorder works perfectly fine, man. I use it every night. Do you? What do you talk about to yourself? I don't. I play music. Oh, but it, I thought it's a voice recorder. Hmm. You're not. You're not. Chris is not suffering me today. I mean, it's, it doesn't make some of these things that you say don't make sense. You said you use your voice recorder. Yeah, I said I use a voice recorder. But you play music. Yeah. So to only record your voice. Oh God. <laughs> Do you believe it's almost August? Yeah, I can't I can't wait till summer's over. That's crazy, man. We're smack dab in the middle of the so called season here oh, in Myrtle it's been Beach. So crazy, man. Uh matter of fact, I like to take some time off off season, man. <laughs> yes. And yeah. what what will you do? Not play gigs, maybe? Until, oh, until until next summer, or I don't know. Oh my! What do God. you think? I don't know. I don't would think you like I'm, to take it off. No, a, I would. I'm not. I'll keep playing. Recharge, man. Eh. I'm all right. You might need a recharge. You don't need a recharge. You don't need to refresh the oh. music or anything like that. I, I'd like to get out of town for like a week. Well, get out of town, man. That's uh, yeah. Get out of town. I, I want to go somewhere fresh, different. I want to go somewhere else. We'll go somewhere that you haven't been before. Colorado. Have you been there before? No. Um, I'm not interested. (laughs) So you kind of want to get away, but you're not interested. I don't want to go to Colorado. There's no reason. No. Do you smoke weed? Barely. Well, there's weed there. There's weed everywhere. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> if you, if you, I know, please. I mean, as come long, on. As long as we've been like, as long as we've been around. Weed. No, I. Every, people think I smoke a lot of. No, I don't, man. Oh my god! Hey, listen. You like this saying? Do do stuff you really like to do. You're never too late. It's never too late. The time will pass anyway. So why not pick up something you like to do and do it? Yeah. <laughs> that's right man that's all that's all i get yeah that's right that's right man what what do you what else do you want man a standing ovation no that's all I, i'm surprised you don't have an old ovation guitar in here uh they still make those things yeah I, I, there's one i want but i don't need any more guitars right now i inspired that i fear that's i have more than that that you can see <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot you have more guitars in this sure yeah there you're missing something here in that closet right there? Oh, yeah. you've re- I see a bunch of guitar cases up there. 
Yeah, All what, right, what about so that what? Black, now just don't what, give him my address out. What about that black acoustic that you usually have? Is it in there? Talk a mini? Up there, Alvarez is a black one, another one over there. I thought you had a Yamaha, a black Yamaha. I gave that to Tim. Oh, did you? Oh, my okay. nephew years ago when I bought my Martin. And you gave an SG to our friend Oscar, yeah. which is awesome, back in the day. Yeah, he still has it. I know, I love that 40 well, years I, it, later. It needed see. to be for him, man. Yeah. In 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 uh, doing music ministry. Yes, very good. Yeah. Well, it was his. I was just I just had it. You, like, uh, yes, exactly. This needs to go, you know, it, this needs to go to him, I felt in my spirit. So there it was. And there he is. He still has it. Yeah. So Yeah, that's right. Well, I can't tell you I had a fantastic time to this Why this, not, man? But it's great to see you. Good to see you. I'm sorry uh I'm not sorry. <laughs> what are you? What I'm are not you? Sorry about anything? What are you concocting something to be sorry about? No, I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm through with uh, being cool. Yeah, through with and uh, screw guilt, man. Oh yeah. No, not that's not true. Let guilt transform you. Al Goldstein? No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> screw magazine. Oh my god. God, I saw that guy traipsing around one of the tobacco cigar shows. Oh, that makes sense to me. Yeah, he was, I saw It's like, man, that's Al Goldstein. <laughs> oh, my God, that's a trip. You saw all kinds of people at these shows. Mickey Rooney once I saw. Oh, damn. You know, probably like involved with some kind of cigar venture or something. Yeah, but didn't we see him when he when he opened his Mickey Rooney barbecue pit? Mickey Rooney star BQ. Oh, yeah. Where the hell was that? Down Wilcox or something? Oh. Or some street, Las Palmas, something. It was down yeah. one of those streets. Yeah. Starbucks. That, that was that was a fail. We were there with Roy Mosley. Yeah. Did, now, do you think his cigar venture went the same way as the Starbucks? Probably. Yeah. I mean, why would you be? Why would Mickey Rooney be in a cigar uh, business? I don't know. Why would he be at the show then? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Maybe really? he was building sets with Judy Garland. I'll build the sets. Yeah. And we'll get the dancers. Yeah, yeah. We'll borrow the old, the old barn. The barn, yeah. From yeah. Uncle So and So and Auntie Someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All uh, right. What's man. the name of that show? I don't know. Movie. I don't remember. I remember the movie. I don't remember, dude. I remember them doing shit like that. I couldn't pinpoint the movie. I remember Mama. Mama and those nice biscuits she used to make throw mama from the train <laughs> no i remember we had to go to some kind of commercial agent and read something like that i remember mama i don't and, yeah because we were so lackluster about it nobody called it's us kind, back it's kind of like me on the mic right now man well, dad was mad at you for being a little what's the word what did he call me brazen not brazen sullen sullen that's it you were sullen you weren't into it so you screwed up my acting career well, you can't act anyway. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just. I'm. I'm right where I belong. Let's blame. Let's blame everyone else, man. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Do the work, man. And uh, plus, those pictures Dad had this lady named Margot Van take. I was so mad at him. Oh. Because then, because when I went to, we were at the Ann Wright Agency at the yeah. time. They go, who took these? And I could tell they were kind of snarky about. It. Oh, it's Margot Van. It's like old school. You know, your oh. pa was doing something and. I could tell they didn't like them, and they would kind of. It was jokey to them. Uh -huh. I was so mad at Dad. I went and I told him I was mad at him. And what did he say? He goes, "I'm sorry, son. I did something. I don't remember what he said. I was trying to help you." Dad couldn't do anything but old school. Yeah, but anyway, dude, there's some cat coming out from under your couch over here. Missy, hi, Missy. Hi, Missy. We had to take her to the vet yesterday. Hi there. Oh, you do look like Barbara Streisand. Yeah, she is Babs. Oh She's my our God. My music girl. Hi, baby. So we had to get her in the cage. She's fierce, man. But it, it this went was the cat well. that was the problem getting into the. Yeah, she's fierce. She looks sweet. She's sweet as hell, unless you want to try to get her in a cage. You better watch out, man. She's all right. She's real nice, but she'll go to your ass. Yeah. Well, we we got her. She used to hang around outside of the store. Yeah. Oh, she's, box. she's fair uh, will feral but okay. she was never really feral she was always very sweet so one day a couple friends and i were in the lounge and one of them says let's get her get the cage let's get her so we closed the door 
the, 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 the door to the store and we opened the door to outside. She came in, we closed it. And then it was on, man. She was on ledges, climbing around picture on pictures frames. We wore her up. Finally, she gave up. But man, she put up a fight. But she's sweet. She's my music girl. Oh well, she looks. <laughs> did she put up a fight? Uh huh. She ba, sure ba, did. Ba, she's ba, ba. man. She's 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 strong. Don't let her fool you. But she's sweet as can be. She looks nice. She's beautiful. She's my baby. I feel. I think at, at any moment she's going to go. What are all these new sensations? Doesn't she look like her man? Look mm, at her face. Strange appeal. It's, but yeah, she's she's Babs. Hey, do you do you uh, agree that we can? Where the one of the few choices we have the complete control over is the way our attitude is and our responses to people. Yeah, it never works for me. But we have cl- between stimulus and response is the power to choose. Who, who's that? Probably like Stephen Covey Ram or something. Das. <laughs> no, no. Uh, why do you say that? We, I don't know because I love that. I love that. No, name. why do you say that? Because I wrote a blog post about it. Because I uh, I know that good. sometimes when I respond to uh, my girlfriend Brenda, she says my t- it's all about the way I answer and respond to things. Oh, and me I do. Th- and I'm like, yes, you have that freedom to choose. You have that great little bit of time between the time you hear something or see something and the time you respond between stimulus and response is the power to choose that's exactly right i i, I love that quote i'm gonna but look guess up, what man i wall. really have a hard time with tone you know you've been been here with me a, a half an hour you I, already i know I, <laughs> and you're as bad as i am but you make it nice I, I, but i smile when i when i no i don't uh, uh, my tone is bad. I know it is, and I, sometimes I don't have I don't have time to think about it. You just, you just give it a, give it a little time bit more. Think time. about it, man. Give it just a little more time. Between. Count the count the ten. Count to five. You just kind of think about it and just be nice about it. Your response instead of being an uh, asshole. In, theoretically, that's what I would like to be. Yes. But oh, wretched man that I am! Who will deliver me from this body of death? Oh, oh, it's like that. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Who, oh, the things that I want to do, I don't do. But the things I don't want to do, I do. What's wrong with me? <laughs> What's the matter with me? The sin nature. Oh, my God. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Oh, wretched man that I am. No, that means... Th- th- I to repent me, in dust and ashes. Okay, <laughs> with all that shit. Oh, I all, need all a that hair shit aside. shirt. Listen, Give me a hair shirt. Has, talk about the way you respond to people. And, and, and you're telling so, that it's nothing so to do sorry. with this bullshit that you're talking about so right now. Very, very sorry. Mea culpa. <laughs> you mea culpa. Yeah, but, you, but, but imagine the fewer apologies. Ooh, I don't apologize. The fewer apologies would have to be made. I said, devil, I don't worry no more. The devil made me do it. Oh, what? More? Yeah, I'd rather not apologize. So I and mean, you still rather be, be an re- asshole and not apologize. That would be, that would be cool. How about you choose your response better and there's no need to apologize? How about don't apologize anyway? <laughs> That's good too. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, better. Wait, to, I want a better life. The little what is it between what? Between stimulus and response is your greatest power. Your power to choose. That I, I, that does sound. Is that's not James Drummond? Is it? I don't know who that is, and it's and I Stephen don't. Stephen Covey. It could be could be Stephen Covey. I don't think it's um Wayne Dyer. No, and don't don't lean your your ladder on the wrong wall. Okay, that's awesome. When you get up there, you're destined for a fall. Who's that, Bob Dylan? That's me. Oh, that's pretty good. The, fact, the, the fact that I confuse that for Bob Dylan is... Dude, something. I can I can, I can can ad-lib songs as good as Linda Perry. You mean Wrecking Ball? No, who is Linda Perry? For, uh, non-blondes lady producer. Oh, for non-blondes lady producer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Linda Perry. Mom had a friend named Linda Perry. Well, not that one. But what 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 really makes you want to buy all these guitars? Voices, not the voices in my head, the the voice of the instrument, the voice of what the Amex, huh? <laughs> the voice of the Amex card. As I said, each instrument that's out serves a specific purpose and has a, sep- a specific voice. That's really cool. You have quite a collection. So the little travel guitar is for just songwriting. You can play it live. The Orange Woods, uh, the companion. That looks little. That's like a toy. So I do. I do have to call the Morgan Mahogany and the Morgan Spruce. I was going to call one Fairchild, and maybe I'll do JP for the other. Or call call one Spurlock. Oh, 
Spurlock Holmes. The Morgan Spruce should be Morgan Spurlock. And this one's what? That's an Oliver Jr. Mahogany Live. So call that JP. No, that Spur- can't be more because I have the Oliver, the Morgan Mahogany Live just like that with the mahogany top. That one would be JP. The baritone is Barry. <laughs> or Barack. That looks like know. something like in the, the Coffee House movie. Like, the, look yeah, at the way that guitar big, is shaped. big yeah. and weird, man. And then that, so that's tuned from that's tuned down to B. And that was like that from like All Men Are Liars. That guitar. Yeah, the, they all have a specific purpose. Yes, uh, you strum them. Then the, you know, at like the bass, the two guitars are tuned different. The electrics are tuned differently. They They're are not just out here for for my health. As a I matter of fact, I get sick of looking I, at them. I think you spent a lot of time putting them out so I could see them. Yeah, sure. Because you know how unimpressed I am with. Well, don't them. you think I get the better ones out there? <laughs> You got, I, I, God, okay. Oh man, you know what? I found my mother had a Stradivarius. She gave it to me. Yeah, some guy, <laughs> some guy said he had a Stradivarius. Yeah, I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there were, there weren't a lot of money back then. Really? No. You pathological liar. <laughs> Unbelievable. Or either that, or you're stupid. Or maybe both. <laughs> maybe they're both. Oh, Am I right? Kind of uh, stupid. No, kind know. of a liar. I don't know. Yes, you do. Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> it's not a Stradivarius, you dumbass. What? It could be like a, a, a Canal Street Stradivarius. Canal That's, Street what? Is it Canal Street in... Uh, um, Stradivarius? You mean Canal Street in New Orleans where the, the, the parades go down? You don't know Canal Street in New York, man? Where, where all you kind of ca- go down this little uh, alley? And where all the counterfeit and shit? down some stairs. I bought myself room. a Roly watch. I got my Roly on my arm. What? And I have a my my, my fake Louis Vuitton. It's like, <laughs> do you really have that? Do you really have stuff like that? Do I? Hell no. Why are you going to buy counterfeit anything? People go just because they think. I don't know. Because they want to be seen with it. Yes. It's like guys who buy expensive guitars and then smoke with and then extend their arm out with the band facing out and do this little sweeping thing. Did you say cigars? Yeah. Before they take a. A puff, they they kind of sweep their arm around. Look at me, I'm cool, man. And then put it in their mouth. Status bullshit. Put it in their mouths. That's status bullshit, man. I mean, I like the other thing. We you smoke what you like. Oh yeah, that's exactly right. Some people don't even like cigars. Some people like weed. And guitar wise, you play what you like. Doesn't matter. A lot of these aren't expensive, but they sound great. My piano isn't expensive, but I like it. Who's gonna lug? Who's gonna lug a Nord to bars? Who's gonna lug a Leslie? And a Hammond B3 to a bar. Uh, some guys would. Why? Not now. Right. No way. Because the guys that were doing it are far too old to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Unless you got roadies. You got a to, grand it, piano. To play a dive bar, you show up with your entourage and have people sh- schlep in a Hammond B3. No, I'm a big fan of technology, man. Yeah, well, these don't look very technological advanced, these guitars. They're they never will be, but the electronics are good. There are pieces of wood with this kind of metal yeah, strings. They, they, stuff uh, granted, with a hole they are in kind it. of they are kind of archaic. It's weird. Guitar is kind of I hate to say it, but almost passe. Almost. It's not. It's not the mainstay of pop music. It hasn't it's, been for a no, long it's time. No, it's not. It's not. I mean, I uh, probably get some flack for that, but I honestly think it's a. Uh, That's okay, Roberta. It's uh very funny. It's just. It's. I mean, we all. I love it. I love them, but. In the scope of things on the horizon of music, I don't know, man. That doesn't mean you got to stop playing the guitar. No, I, I'm never going to. St- I mean, I just, just concentrate saying. on beats with that little keyboard of yours. No, no I don't. I'm, a- I'm not. I don't. I do my thing, man. I do yeah. when the music calls. Well, I try to answer. You're a songwriter. Usually, I don't answer. Yeah, but I have a lot of things going on, like little ideas and things now. So, you're a songwriter. I am. Oh, that movie. I am, I said. How about that movie with Willie Nelson? Oh, it was terrible. Songwriter. Oh. Was Chris Christopherson in that too? I don't, uh, I think so. But how about the movie Ishtar? I've never saw it. You know what it's about, songwriters? It is. It, I think so. It's uh, uh, Warren Beatty and Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, I know. It was a flop. Wasn't it about songwriting? I didn't know that. I thought they were walking in a desert or something. I may be wrong. I think you are. I, uh, I don't know are. if I'm wrong. Maybe they're walking in a desert of uh, like a slump, songwriting slump. Mm, they're I, walking th- uh, across the desert to get back to the Brill Building. <laughs> Which has been hit by a missile and no longer exists. It's just red just mist. Kidding. Now they're, now it's it's retail at the Brill. They've, they've, it's been co-opted. 
the mu- music soul of music has left that building. Now it's all retail space. So could you buy Brill cream there? <laughs> you could buy Brillo pads. Oh, that's interesting, but no songs. No songs, man. Well, this really has been an interesting uh, little conversation with you today. Oh, has it? Yes, but unfortunately, some of us have to work. Okay. Like I busted my ass yesterday, you mean? Mm-hmm. That was work. Yeah. Hey, I, I was at the foot of the cross, man. I didn't see you there. Oh, you didn't see me there? You Did you look over on the Catholic side? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. You know, I didn't get the note on the door. Yeah, it's like Catholics, other, no, other entrance, please. No, Catholics have the, the best entrance. Yeah, of course they do. All right, dude. Yeah, but I'll just, you know what? I'm just happy to to, to to crawl my claw my way in. I don't have to claw. I I got I got I got access. Let I got me the through. backstage access. Let pass. me through. I got special dispensation. You know who gave Let it me to through. me? Backstage pass. Special dispensation. Thank you. You know who gave it to me? Sister Kathleen. Jesus. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I uh, deal with a higher authority. <laughs> that's hebrew national hebrew national yeah they yeah, answer to a higher uh, uncle uncle sam with a hot dog and we answer to a higher authority looks up yeah what well, hey man that's about the best the best hot dog there is man i don't know nathan's yeah nathan's is good but is there pork in that one i i i don't think so is it kosher i think so i don't know i'd have to check well i like beef and pork and all that but uh, i mean i like there's some dogs. hot dogs hebrew national yeah. nathan's uh, uh forget a ballpark frank mm. They plump when you cook them. <laughs> yeah, all right, dude. <laughs> all right, man. All right, I, I'm going to plump out of here. All right, so episode 66, we're the Yale Brothers. Thank you for listening to this nonsense. Thank you. Uh, Yale Brothers at gmail.com or Yale Brothers at Facebook. What? <laughs> Facebook.com slash the Yale Brothers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, we need a website. Oh, God. Okay, I'll talk to you later. All right, love you, man. Have a good day, and thanks, everybody, for listening, and rock and roll. And remember, sometimes something on a wall doesn't mean what you think it does.